Hi, I'm Charlie, KV4JT. I just got this um, Hammerlin HQ170A on eBay a couple of days ago. And uh, it was uh, one of those tech specials, so I got it pretty cheap. Actually, when it came in, it survived shipping pretty well. And I was proud of that, of course. Um, when I started checking it out, I found that it did play. Um, all the functions worked, but uh, it's had some problems from uh, uh, people trying to do repairs. Uh, whoever tried to do the last tune-up apparently cracked uh, three of the uh, cores in the IF transformers. If you look under, if you look under the bottom of this thing, you're going to see uh, a menagerie of uh, wafer switches. Ooh, wafers, 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 and more wafers, and they're in the way of uh, getting to those uh, transformers. Uh, so, what you're going to have to do in order to work on them, you're going to have to pull this whole thing out. It's held in by two screws here, and uh, it has uh, two screws up top here, or actually, it's on the side since I have it turned up. And um, it's held in by some wires that are uh, wired down to those uh, transformers. So here's what we have to do. We're going to pull off the knobs. One, two, I've already loosened them up. We're going to pull the two screws out here. We're going to take these two screws out. Now the whole thing's going to be loose. What I want you to do is cut the wires loose down here and leave a little bit of the wire on it so that you can see the color of the insulation so that you know where where uh, where it goes back all right we're back uh, I've pulled the whole section out as you can see and uh, I have it out on the bench there are 12 wires that you have to cut and I cut them about a quarter of an inch or so uh, from where they were tied in the unit and I did not cut them off of the switch because I want to be able to identify where they go back we're going to replace those wires we're going to make them longer and uh, we're going to take this whole bank I hope you can see a little better with all the wires that were cut <clears throat> we're going to uh, mount this thing just like this we're going to mount it up here and uh, with it mounted up here on the side, uh, you'll be able to uh, run wires from the switch down to where it originally tied. And that length of wire is not actually going to hurt it. It'll, uh, it'll do just fine. All right, looking at the side of the unit, uh, you're going to have to drill a couple of holes. Uh, go back one and eleven sixteenths inches from the original hole you see where I have those two marked so the switch bracket is going to sit right there where I've marked those two holes right there all right I drilled these two holes mounted it just the way I said I'm using uh, number eight screws and bolts S screws and nuts I'm sorry and uh, as you see it's mounted on the side just the way we said okay there's a better picture of it and I haven't tightened the screws down yet so it's still a little loose all right that's the way it's going to mount and you can put the knobs on when you're ready now in order to uh, solder new wires on here what we're going to do we're going to take the old wire off we're going to tack a new wire on there and it's going to go down to where it used to be um, you're probably going to have to pull this back loose set it on the bench in order to get to these wires and then uh, use a length of wire that's long enough to do the job <clears throat> and you can shorten it up as you need so make it to uh, make the wire longer than necessary and uh, and then when you um, remount the uh, uh, switch switch bank here, um, you'll be able to uh, pull the wire over, not too tight, 
and you'll be able to solder it down uh, to where it used to land here on these uh, transformers. Here we go. Now I've added uh, hookup wire to all of these uh, places where the uh, old wires were attached. And uh, what you need to do is uh, cut your wires about 10 inches long and that will allow any of them to go anywhere. I've tagged these as you see with, uh, with a letter. There's the letter C. They go um, A through L. That's 12 of them. And uh, what happens is I'm going to set this up here. And uh, that's the side of the unit where I've drilled the screws. I'm going to wire it down where they go under the chassis and if you notice I've already tagged some of these with the letters where the uh, where the wires go so what I want you to do is use number 22 stranded hookup wire there's some of it right there some of it is NTE um, that's uh, Belden and uh, that's another brand Minitronics you can buy this off of eBay or some electronic store do not use solid wire always use stranded and if, uh, if you're not an expert solderer, you're going to become one. Be very careful with these wafer switches. Uh, if you cannot pull the old wire off, then just clip it close. And uh, also, you need, to, uh, you need to check all these solder joints, the original ones, and make sure that everything is soldered properly. Uh, every now and then, I'll find a Hammerlin radio that has some unsoldered joints. Uh, they were never soldered properly because they were uh, probably uh, under uh, the next wire and kind of invisible. So if you find that, uh, be sure and uh, sort of those down. They, it'll create a lot of heartache if you don't. So now I'm going to mount this switch up on the radio and wire everything down, and I'll get back. All right, well, I've got the uh, switch bank mounted back, as you can see. And uh, haven't turned it on yet, but uh, I'm about to. And if you notice, I've got the wires all tied down here, and they're tagged. little paper tag I have on them. Uh, the colors uh, are similar to what was on there originally. Uh, you may not have all the colors that you want, but uh, they're only, what, three, four colors used anyway. Just make sure they're tagged correctly and tied down to the right spot. Now the next step will be to attempt to tune it up. Uh, let me turn this over so you can see a little better. There it is mounted on the side and uh, I have the knobs on it and uh, I can I can turn these whichever way I want to. Remember the back side is uh, what matches up the lettering now. So I can uh, do the selection. The wires are not overly long and uh, when you get done with this thing after everything is tuned up, everything is said and done all you're going to do is unscrew it, pick this up, mount it back in the place that it goes, leave these wires the length that they are, don't cut them. But there are three groups because you have three sets of uh, 60K CIFs. This is one group, two groups, three groups. You want to keep those isolated and not let them get close to each other because it may uh, present some uh, feedback or oscillation. If you have feedback and oscillation, just move the wires around until you eliminate it. Um, the ones that I've tried before, I didn't have to do that. It worked okay. Well, I ran into a little bit of a problem. If, you, uh, if you've ever operated one of these things, you know that uh, it has a front bezel. I pulled it off. And you see that um, the bezel has an alignment right here in the middle of each one of the uh, the openings. And let's see if you can see that one also. Now, this hairline indicator that you see right here is supposed to line up with those on both sides. On this radio it does not. Now I have a couple of other radios that do line up, but for some reason this one does not want to. What happens if this hairline is vertical this one is not and it's about a quarter of an inch off 
so I pulled the front bezel off to see if I could figure out why. Now there's one other thing you need to know when you pull this bezel off this is the back side of the bezel uh, there are some standoffs that are located where the screws were there's one these were glued on with some kind of a, uh, a permanent glue uh, you're going to have to glue those back or you'll never be able to get the bezel back on because you can't hold these in place and put the screw in there's just no way to do it so I'm going to clean this, um, this black gook off of here that used to be the glue and I'm going to I'm going to glue them back down with epoxy that'll be a two-part epoxy and I've done that before on these radios and uh, it, it works just fine no problem I'm going to try to correct the uh, hairline indicator and uh, this is where I'm going to do it from center to center I've taken my dividers and I've uh, figured out that from one of the indicators to the other is a hundred and fifty seven millimeters okay uh, I think you can see it a little better when uh, when this thing is uh, mounted correctly one hairline to the other should be 157 millimeters so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut this bar right here and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna insert a clamp this is a clip that comes off of uh, one of these things See, this is a telephone type of uh, bridging strip, and these clips are used to bridge the connectors, and they just push on like so. So, if you can get a hold of one of those, uh, that'll facilitate the repair. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it right here where the hole is. That's where the spring goes back. I'm going to put the clip on it. I'm going to reset it up here on the uh, dials. I'm going to mark it so that the lines are 157 millimeters apart. I'm going to mark this and I'm going to solder that clip on there. And effectively, that will straighten out the distance from line to line so that it lines up correctly on the bezel. So, here we go. I won't be able to show you the whole operation, but when I get done, I'll come back. So when I get it back together, I'll show you that these uh, these lines actually line up properly, and uh, and now uh, I'll have a, a good working uh, radio, and it'll calibrate just just perfect. And just one note, by the way, uh, if you look at this, let's see if I can get a close up here. You'll see that I did a little grinding on it. You see where it's ground off right here. Uh, there was a flare on it. Uh, that's the way these clips are made. So I put it on the grind rock and I ground it off a little bit on that side and I ground it off a little bit on this side. I don't know if you can really see the detail on that or not. See that ground off edge? And that way um, it won't scrape the dials and uh, create an extra problem. I did drill a hole for the spring to mount back, but if you, if you notice, I was able to mount this the spring actually on that slot of this clip that's the way the clips are made so if you get clips they'll probably be very similar so that keeps the spring out of the way of the uh, the dials it's a very close uh, proximity operation uh, and you don't want anything scraping you don't want your dials ruined I'll be back uh, you see the little tip Right there, right under the <coughs> excuse me, right under the hairline indicator, you see that it lines up now. And if you look on the other side, you see the same little tip. The little tip lines up with the hairline indicator. Both sides, of course, is uh, there is some uh, parallax involved here, so you got to be right in front of it to see that. Anyway, we're back together. Uh, I'm not going to turn the radio on and show you that it works. Just take my word for it. But uh, you've seen the uh, the repairs of the IF. You've seen uh, how we had to treat the uh, switch bank. Anyway, I'm done with this one. This is a good working radio. I didn't pay a lot for it. Um, I fixed it, and I may put it back out for sale. So long.
from Kilowatt Victor Ford, Juliet Tango.